Hey there, Facebook Live. Hope you are doing well. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I wanted to start jumping on here at the beginning of the week because there is just such a huge uh, week ahead. Um, I do a lot of my recording Thursdays and uh, generally either Fridays or Wednesdays. And what's going on now is I'm, I'm starting to... Uh, have to, to condense some of the interviewing that I am doing in terms of days of the week just because it is absolutely huge. Carlos, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, so, um, yeah, so good things are happening around here. Um, really, the purpose of this pre-interview uh, uh, Facebook Live is to kind of let you know what's coming. Last week, actually, I got to start this two weeks ago, I started experimenting with Facebook Live, and the initial experiment was a failure because Skype, I couldn't get Skype to work on Facebook Live. You couldn't hear my guest, and I had a very illustrious guest, and it really went south, and people, uh, I tried to yank down the video, <laughs> and people, it was still up even though I yanked down the video, and people were leaving comments about, I can't hear your guest. Now, I'm happy to say last week, I think I interviewed eight people last week, and uh, you could hear the guests, so it's good. So what I'm doing now is I'm giving most of my interviewees the option. They don't know about this ahead of time unless they're really into social media and they see what I've been doing. Uh, but if they are visual, I give them the option. Now, I do not force them because that wouldn't be very nice of me as an interviewer to do this. But I give them the option to go on Facebook Live. because uh, and, and actually, every time I've done that for somebody, I believe they've taken me up on it because it's just a great way to close the gap. Right now, I'm, I'm at around a 40-day gap between the times that I'm able to interview people. And as you can see, this week, I think, what am I doing? I'm interviewing 10 people today, 9 or 10 people uh, I have one person have to reschedule, and I, I can't even count how many this is. I think it's 17 interviews that I am doing today and tomorrow. So uh, I want to just publicize this, get the word out as much as possible. The, um, and, and unfortunately, what you're hearing right now on the other end of Facebook is a little bit of crackly stuff. Certainly, I've got the, the best rig uh, within reason that money can buy. I've got a $600 microphone right here. So there's some kind of issue on Facebook Live uh, where the bottleneck is in terms of the quality, which is why you hear it a little bit scratchy. I apologize for that. But uh, anyhow, uh, I am getting ready to go on for a marathon pace beginning at a little after 12 noon today, New York time. And uh, it's, it's all good. I really like this because I'm starting to see some of you that join my neighbor Dave up the street. Emily, episode two. Wow. Hey, I hope your fundraiser went really, really well. Happy 60th birthday to you, Patty. Yes, I see you. And, uh, ah, Carlos, you've got, you've got expertise in the sound. I didn't know. I thought it was just, uh, I thought it was just like IT stuff. You are a man of many talents as well. Patty. Thanks for the comment. Happy 60th birthday to you. Um, let me tell you a little bit about some of the people I'm going to be interviewing. And feel free, uh, and, and this is kind of the ground rules. If you type in a comment or two or a question, uh, I will try to save a little bit of time after the recorded portion of the interview. If, if I have things paced well, it uh, looks like my RAM. Um, Carlos, I think I'm going to call you for help with my RAM because the genius is the genius bar. I've got 34 megabytes out of my 8 gigs in RAM, which is why this is really slow right now. So now I'm having to hit a button to free it up. Uh, hopefully it doesn't crash the broadcast right now. But let me tell you a little bit about the people that I'm going to be interviewing. And uh, I'm pulling them up on my... Uh, on my little sc screen here. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Reagan. Okay. So we've got the 
African Roots of Gender Equality with Reagan Adenye. This is going to be great because, uh, and I saw something about this on the Smithsonian Channel uh, recently. Sorry for the glass glare, everybody. Uh, that's going to be great. His whole point of his TEDx talk was that uh, Africa has always uh, been a gender equal nation, uh, meaning that it's kind of like this is, you know, I'll, I'll culturally appropriate Wonder Woman into um, pre-Ottoman colonized Africa. So there was the, the Ottomans came in and colonized Africa, then the Christians did. And before all of that, basically the women in Africa were warriors just like the men were. It's going to be a fun interview. Uh, Ashwin Naidu is a uh, is a conservationist. I believe he goes in and he saves the tigers and the lions. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Kristen Muller is uh, that's going to be a real heartfelt interview because her TED talk was called "Forged by Fire." She basically escaped a forest fire with the clothes on her back and a couple other things, uh, maybe a pet, maybe a couple valuable documents and. And things and and basically um, is going to expose some of the myths of oh isn't it great to be minimalist and isn't it great that that everything burned down in your house because now you're free well <laughs> that uh, it, from her talk it, it sounded like some of that was a myth I mean you've got to kind of grieve and and uh, it's real easy to say basically stupid things to people at difficult times in their life and maybe we can. Just learn not to do that a little bit. Uh, starting with me, the the interviewer as well, uh, Sharab uh, Shea Kondro. She she does a lot of meditation. She's going to be talking about philosophy. Uh, a good uh, TEDx um, Sonoma speaker, uh, not Sonoma, Sedona, not Sonoma, Sedona. I haven't been to Sedona yet. That's going to be outstanding. Uh, Claire Snyman is uh, going to talk about how to save your life in a complex healthcare situation. She, from her talk, uh, she was diagnosed with brain cancer, and it's all about you, you have to um, take charge of your medical health and, and help the providers not make uh, any kind of errors. Now, I'm born to medicine, as you know. I'm married to medicine. I come from a medical background. At no point will anyone, in the med or I will say, has anyone in the medical profession said to me, Nathan, we never make mistakes, okay? They all admit, they know they make mistakes, okay? And so the whole point is to join up with medical providers and help them and be an active participant in, and I think that's common ground for everybody. I think where we lose common ground is should, should we sue nurses and doctors and hospitals for pain and suffering damages uh, when, you know, when, when we've got these kinds of stories. And I could tell you, I won't tell you stories about that because it doesn't play well to the general public. But I mean, ha needless to say, there have been really stupid lawsuits. I don't think any of you would, would deny there have been stupid lawsuits that actually hike up greatly the cost of your insurance and my insurance because of stupid pain and suffering, baseless, groundless lawsuits. Uh, and I'm not talking about the ones where there were real pain and suffering. I'm talking about where there were profiteering le legal people that were the ones that, that did not do their homework. And I can come back. I've got plenty of medical friends. I can give you plenty of evidence with that as well. Now, I'm not here to get in a big, you know, war with uh with everyone watching just there there this is going to be a great interview because there are uh i think everyone will agree when you are better informed when you are an active participant in your own health care it goes better for everybody especially you which is what what the people in the hospital really are here to help you with the next one is called peace is an inside job that's uh cindy nolte's tedx talk that's outstanding the next one is Janet Geddes, uh, which is why vulnerability sits at the heart of community. Janet has really bad migraines, and so she advocates for migraine sufferers, the migraine suffering community. That's going to be a lot of fun. She also owns a bookshop right there in Athens, Georgia, which is uh, the, the birthplace of, uh, I believe, uh, REM, 
uh, the University of Georgia, if I'm, if I'm correct in all of that. Uh, and if you're typing comments, I can't see it because I've got my uh, spreadsheet over top of your comments. So let, let's just take a look. Okay, so looking good. Yeah, you're always looking good, Ben Hampton. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, and then we've got David Quick, which is uh, his talk was called Harnessing the Power of Your Herd. It's about, uh, David does a lot of work with uh, Vistage and he's got his own executive groups. He's going to be a great person to talk with, and he basically talks about how everybody in the herd is also a bull, uh, meaning a bull in the China shop, and, and there are three types of bulls, and uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to talk with him as well. Uh, Anwar Dafa Allah is going to wrap up the day today, and that's going to be a lot of fun because he has transcribed over a thousand TED Talks, which is pretty huge. Now, you think I'm doing something remarkable here. It's really not remarkable yet, people, okay? Interviewing 16 people in a day, that's not remarkable, okay? Whatever it is, 16, 17, that's not remarkable. It's actually easier than you'd think. Uh, I know there are some other podcasts out there that you might know about that interview. They've been doing seven day a week for the last six years. Um, it, it, a lot of people do. Believe it or not, a lot of people do a seven-day-a-week podcast. It's no big deal anymore. What is a big deal is that this guy, Anwar Dafa Allah, he has transcribed. No, he had not transcribed. I said the wrong word. Translated. He is from East Sudan, which is he, he, his made-up term. He lives in South Sudan, which is not the most stable place where you want to be translating. He has translated over 1,000 TED Talks. Okay, that, my friends, is remarkable because if you're translate, I mean, you've got to be careful with the nuancing. This is going to be unbelievable. I'm going to give him a standing ovation, I think, when I talk with him at the end of the day. Hopefully, he joins us via video. I don't know if, if he's based in South Sudan. There may not be the bandwidth for that. Uh, I've got my fingers crossed, but it would sure would be great if he was video enabled and we uh, could do a Facebook Live with him if those conditions are met and if he wants, <coughs> excuse me, to join me for a Facebook Live. Now, I want to show you folks a, uh, a secret to uh, what I do. I have little shot glasses here from Starbucks. Oh, cool. I've got a cool camera that actually auto focuses on things, uh, which is really cool. And then I have tea, okay? This is kombucha tea and if you've ever seen me doing a live interview you see me topping up and uh, what I've done is I've weaned myself off of coffee I just have hot tea all right pretty soon I'm going to switch to tete day in honor of our Paraguayan friends uh, Carlos I don't know if he's still watching but Carlos and I were in, pa in Paraguay uh, a couple years ago and they have a special energy drink. So right now, it's actually starting to warm up a little bit. This is going to become a too hot of a drink. I may switch to the Tete Day, except that's going to spike me up. That's going to spike up my energy level. Oh, my gosh. But still, I like a nice hot tea. With just a little, why the shot glass? Because uh, I can't drink very much quantities without burning my throat. So this way... I have a nice hot drink, not lukewarm, not warm, not scalding, but I, I can just quickly um, do it, and then I can top up, and I have a nice hot, warm drink, which uh, one of my mentors, Paul Martinelli, he, he talks about anchoring your ideal state through uh, a, a nice warm cup of coffee, which is what I've done as well. So I'm just creating my uh, future reality, one interview as, as, at a time, folks. And I couldn't be happier, actually. I'm just so happy to be able to do this. Susanna, we are going to be talking. I see you join. We're going to be talking with Susanna uh, later on, I believe, uh, tomorrow, I believe. And she has a great, fabulous talk about Wolverine from uh, the X-Men. So uh, actually, now that I'm seeing people joining that are going to be joining uh, me for interviews tomorrow, let's uh, continue with, actually, I know the reason why, because I haven't, I actually haven't posted, uh, I posted the, the 11 people for today into my spreadsheet, and I couldn't get around to posting 
the ones, uh, the six or seven or eight for tomorrow. Uh, I do know Susanna is, um, her talk is about Wolverine. It's brilliant. Uh, I'm going to talk to, um, I believe, Star Hansen tomorrow, um, who is a professional organizer, which is great. And I love her talk because it's not even about organizing. It's about how we clutter our lives, and it's about emotional and kind of spiritual clutter in our life. It's not really about professional organizing or any of this stuff. So it's absolutely amazing. Star Hansen, uh, Star had to reschedule, so I'm, I'm really happy to talk with her finally tomorrow. I'm going to be talking to Casey Ernst tomorrow, I believe, Richard Petty tomorrow, I believe, or maybe I have my my thing jacked up. Actually, what I'm going to do is read right off of my notes over here. Cody Phelps talking to tomorrow, Roger Wong tomorrow, Kimber Lanning, Elizabeth Schossel, uh, Susanna Flores, Bill Roach, Star Hansen tomorrow. And uh, what, a, what a great time this is going to be. Uh, I really need to, I guess, fill out my, um, my, uh, my spreadsheet with people's titles. And uh, I haven't even watched all of the talks for tomorrow. I haven't reviewed them uh, because the the 11 for today took enough time. So, yeah, Nathan, you're a slacker. You're a slacker, McFly. Yeah, I'm a slacker, but I got today's done. So I'm going to get off of today's interview around 7 p.m. tonight. Going to start it in about a half hour. And uh, I just can't wait to get going. And uh, I'm going to figure out a way to be able to get everybody in the future when I do this again, get everybody on board, get everybody cracking, get everybody moving, and, and watch everybody's stuff so that I can talk more intelligently so that I don't crash and burn when I get to the second day's interview. So anyway, uh, I'm really looking forward to this as before, okay? Um, not this time tomorrow. But at the end of day tomorrow, and actually I may do this on Saturday. I might, I might just, because we have guests coming tomorrow overnight uh, for the weekend. I'm not going to be a very good host. My wife is going to go out to dinner tomorrow night. Uh, I've got to hold down the fort here. I've got interviews until at least 5 o'clock tomorrow. And I just told them, hey, I, I can't do dinner after I've done 18 interviews, 17 interviews uh, in a row, however many it was. Can somebody just, t you know, type, you know, give a count and then type up the tally <laughs> and help help a brother out here? I don't know if it's 16, 17 interviews, uh, what I'm doing here today and tomorrow. So I may jump back on on Saturday and give you the final tally. Uh, I also need to relocate the room uh, into my office. This is actually uh, our guest room, which is a nicer room right now. I'm going to relocate because the, the guests are going to be used in the guest room this weekend, uh, meaning tomorrow. And that, that's just a little bit of uh, life on, on the, this end of the microphone, folks. Uh, I really, really thank you all for, for commenting. Uh, I forgot to mention this. If you type in a question, I will try to carve out time in the interview with that person after we finish the recording for them to, to answer that question for you. Um, uh, not going to guarantee it just because uh, everything boxcars. I'm doing, I believe, 10 interviews instead of 11 in a row. So there's a little bit of a boxcar effect. I'm really glad everybody joined uh, today. I want to urge you to go to Be The Talk. I'm all right. Subscribe. You got to listen to the podcast. All right. Most of you want to give a TED Talk someday, and almost all of you have not given your TED Talk or your TEDx Talk. It's easier to give a TEDx Talk than it is to give a TED Talk. All right, Susanna, I'm looking forward to this uh, tomorrow. Get some rest. We're going to have a great interview tomorrow, and, uh, and, and so you guys, you, you want to give a talk, all right? You got to give a talk. I have interviewed, we are up to 86 today, episode, no, 87 drop today. You got to check it out, folks. You got to listen to these for the tips, tools, and techniques that are going to help you change the world with your future talk. All right, before you hire a coach, you, you, you really want to think about hiring a coach, but before you get anywhere close to that, you have to get accepted, and you have to find out how to get accepted 
You have to find it, and that's where we get the tips, tools, and techniques come in, all right? And if you don't hear what you need to hear, you need to reach out to me. Say, Nathan, I subscribe, okay? I left your ratings and review, and I left you a comment on my favorite episode to the person, not you, Nathan, but the person who did my favorite episode. I left them a nice comment. Now I, Nathan, have earned the right to ask you to create a resource for me to get from you what I thought you were promising. Why am I not giving you that resource right now? Well, because I don't know who you are yet, and I don't know specifically what you need from me, okay? And I've been doing this seven days a week. I've been focusing on keeping the train going, all right, for three months now. We've been going seven days a week, and the good news is I've got another 55 interviews already booked out, all right? So the train's not stopping. Uh, are you going to find super detailed, perfect transcriptions and, you know, notes pages and all of this stuff? Not yet. I have the capability for all of that stuff. I haven't had the mental bandwidth yet. And, uh, and so I want you to do all those things and then reach out to me. Tell me what you want from me. All right. I need to create, I still haven't created the free opt-in resource. And that's the, the thing that everybody is telling me I need to have. All right, I just started a, uh, a course or a, kind of a, 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 I guess you could call it a, a, a course uh, with, uh, with one of the big internet marketing gurus out there, and I don't have my opt-in yet, all right? And it's because I don't know what I should create from you. Now, I suspect what I probably should do is let you know how I was able to get accepted at uh, TEDx Harrisburg within about 90 days, I think, of, of putting my applications out. And, and I think the real, the, the real barrier for most people that want to give a TED Talk is just getting an idea and then applying and getting accepted. And then from there, you know, the, the, you either get uh, matched with a coach, but it's, it's probably a good idea to really invest in a coach. And, and the sad thing is that I am bandwidth out. All right. And coaches are not cheap, but I don't do any of that. I, I turn away people that want to coach with me just because that doesn't scale. And there's nothing I'd rather do than you know this. All right. If you know me, you know, there's nothing I'd rather do than talk ideas with you, hone into the idea, craft into the idea, just get, you know, finesse the idea, make the idea go from a, a six and a half idea to an eight to a nine to a nine and a half and a nine and three. I love doing that. I'm the guy for that, but I'm not on the market for that. And I'm not going to be because it simply doesn't scale. And there are so many other great, you know, TEDx coaches out there that are doing great work. And you might even be matched with one that's that's a good one, not just an alumni, but, but a good one. So I think the real barrier, I suspect, is helping more people apply to more events and get accepted. Now, that's after doing 87 interviews. Actually, I've done over 100 interviews, but having 87 released interviews. Um, but I don't really know. So I need to hear from you. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you want. And tell me what you'd like as an opt-in for absolutely free uh, because I haven't, frankly, I haven't created it yet. And that's everybody knows, you know, Internet Tribe Building 101 is give them that free opt-in uh, to to join you know your email list. Everybody knows that, including me. But I haven't made the time to do that mainly because I haven't heard from enough people. And why haven't I heard from enough people? Because I haven't really asked. I mean, this is really my first ask. Okay. So if you're thinking, hey Nathan, you have no right to ask for anything because you've only released 87 podcast episodes for absolutely free that are absolutely available 100% on demand 24 7 absolutely free right to my device um, if, if that's what you're thinking that this isn't the right tribe for you because I think I've I've built up enough credibility with 87 released episodes in 87 days to at least let you know, let you know that I'm trying to find out what you want me to build for you for free. Makes sense? I hope so. And uh, all right, let's 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 scroll around here. Let's see who was, man, we got some great comments. I love the comments. Dave up the street, Emily, 
Awesome. Congratulations on your fundraiser, Susan, Patty. Happy 60th. Carlos, I'll reach out to you, buddy. Ben, where are you living these days, Ben? Is it Florida or is it way out in the Pacific? Give me an update. Bashar, it's good to see you. Susanna, can't wait to talk with you tomorrow. Tyler, hey, man, this is, this is Lead Max. Tyler, this is the new Lead Max for this year. Just check out some more Facebook Live. Jeep, my gosh, right down the street. Awesome. Tony, good to see you. Shandi, Susanna, Tina, good to see you. Philip, good to see you, my friend. All right. Hey, I'm going to shut this down. I can't wait. Jump back in. There will likely be additional Facebook Lives here today uh, after I remember to reboot my computer, so hopefully we don't have any memory slowdowns. Take care, everybody. Be well. I'll see you later today.